Marriage and divorce is not a new topic. Um, really, it has been a topic since the beginning of time. Uh, throughout the days of the Jews, something the Jews dealt with. Um, but in the days of Jesus, you know, so much talk today. Uh, there are so much talk today and discussions and thoughts and opinions about, you know, marriage and divorce and uh, is it okay to get divorced and remarry and all these things. And, you know, the only person that matters on that topic is Jesus. You know, if we want, if we truly want an answer to that question, and then, then we've got to go to God and God gives the answer and we've got to accept his answer. That's what I appreciate. I'm thankful for you know, in the Gospels, we know the Jews are about to see in Mark chapter 10, you know, well, you know, things got a little challenging with the Jews and their laws when it came to marriage and divorce. And, uh, you know, men are still, people are still struggling with that today. But Jesus clears it all up. Um, when we're talking about and about marriage and divorce, is it okay to you know, just, you know, divorce and remarry whenever we want to for whatever reason we want to. This came up in Mark chapter 10. If you'll turn there with me now as we continue through the gospel of Mark. In Mark chapter 10, beginning in verse 1, we find that Jesus arose from where he had been and came to the region of Judea by the other side of the Jordan. And multitudes gathered to Jesus again. And as he was accustomed, he taught them again. So Jesus enters the region of Judea, a bunch of people start coming to him, and so, as Jesus often did, as Mark said, Jesus took that opportunity. When there were a bunch of people, Jesus said, okay, it's time to teach. It's time for them to learn. It's time to, to share God with them. Um, but we notice in verse 2 that as Jesus is there teaching the people, that the Pharisees, some of the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees came and asked Jesus a question. No doubt to challenge him, to try to question him in something he said, but they, they asked him this question. Well, it actually says there, well, they were testing him. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? I mean, that's the way Mark puts it. Um, we can look at some other accounts. We've seen it in Matthew's account. Uh, but here, you know, the Pharisees come and ask, and as Mark puts it, the question is, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And they're testing Jesus. What's he going to say? Can we catch him in his words? Can we twist his words? Can we, can we somehow challenge him? What well, Jesus answered and said to them, what did Moses command you? So he's testing them. So he says, what did Moses say? Well, the answer, well, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and to dismiss her. Which is true. You know, in the law of Moses, we can go through all that and all the ways in which they were allowed to put away. You know, there were requirements, though, and things. But nevertheless, here's what Jesus says in response to that. Verse 5, Jesus answered and said to them, because of the hardness of your heart, Moses wrote you this precept or this command. Because of the hardness of your heart. That's not a commendable quality. But from the beginning of the creation, verse 6, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. So Jesus, number one, again, he's basically told them in response to, well, Moses said we could. Well, you know what? That's because you were a bunch of stubborn, hard-hearted, you know, evil in, you know, people basically. And that's not good. That's not what God wants. That in the beginning, God created the male and female to join together as one flesh. Verse 9, therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. What God has joined together, let not man separate. That seems pretty clear. Um... 
Jesus didn't stutter. Jesus didn't beat around the bush. Jesus didn't speak in code. Jesus is very clear that what God wants in marriage and God's commandment for marriage is that marriage is for life. You cannot just, you know, marry and divorce and remarry and just divorce for whatever reason, whenever you want and all that. No, it's it's a lifelong commitment. Well, you know, say, well, go, well, what about certain circumstances? Well, uh, let's talk about that. Well, verse 10 in the house, the disciples of Jesus also asked him again about the same matter because they probably heard Jesus answer this and they're like, wait, hold up. You know, what do you mean about that? That's pretty serious. So Jesus answered them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. You know, the disciples come to Jesus and they want to know about this whole, you know, American, you know, can a man divorce his wife? And Jesus says, okay, let me tell you. Again, straightforward, simple to understand, didn't beat around the bush, didn't speak in code. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. If a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Bam, bingo, period, end of story. That's it. That's God's view of marriage and divorce. Now, yes, we know that in the Gospel of Matthew and other conversations, other instances, you know, Jesus does talk about, you know, there is one exception that God gives, that if a husband or a wife cheats on, commits adultery against their spouse, then that spouse who was cheated on has the right to put away and divorce their unfaithful spouse. But that is the only exception God gives. I mean, really what we're talking about is, we're talking about, as, you know, Matthew put it, or in Matthew's account, what I'm talking about here, you know, can we just, whenever we feel like it, for whatever reason, you know, divorce and remarry? And the answer that Jesus gives is no. That is not how God views marriage. Um, we can't just, you know, marry, divorce, and remarry whenever we want to, whenever we feel like it, whenever we're just tired of one another, whenever we get bored with one another. Marriage is, in the eyes of God, marriage is for life. Um, and, and so many times people complicate this, and it's not that complicated. And I know people have all kind of situations and so on and so forth. Now there, you know, now there's a whole lot more, you know, other things we could talk about and explain. But when it comes to this, when it comes to marriage and divorce, this is what Jesus said. I didn't make this up. Nobody else made this up. This is what Jesus said. If you divorce and remarry, you're committing adultery. Uh, without the exception that, of course, Jesus gives. So, and as disciples, the disciples came, I mean, the point is this, in the eyes of God, marriage is very serious, so we got to take it seriously. Before we get married, we've got to seriously consider this and know what we're committing ourselves to. And then once we are married, we got to remember what we've committed ourselves to, know what we've committed ourselves to. Um, and to give glory to God and to be faithful to Him, but being faithful in our marriages and not take the easy way out, man's way out, um, but follow the will of God. And this is something we're still dealing with today. People are still asking today, and Jesus answered it so long ago. What God has joined together, let not man separate. Let's remember that. And with that in mind, let's cherish our marriages. And I know, you know, marriage is tough. Uh, sometimes there's going to be challenges. Sometimes we are going to get frustrated. Sometimes we are going to get, uh, you know, tired and weary and what, I mean, it takes work, but that's why I got to focus on loving God and loving our husband or wife as God would have us to and cherishing and being thankful for what is good and overcoming and enduring the challenges and being faithful to God no matter what. So let's continue to work on that. Let's love God. Let's love our spouse. And let's be who God wants us to be. God bless.